Hi everyone, I thought I'd make a video today to answer one of the biggest questions that I hear asked about blood glucose meters and that question is I've tested on two meters, I've got different results, which one's correct? Okay, so a little bit of history about me. At the time of making this film in 2019, I'm 45. I've currently got a BMI of 21.5. I was diagnosed in 2010 with a BMI of 22 point, I think it was 7. Um, I was very quickly put on insulin because the consultants and doctors believed that I was a type 1 because I was under 40 and had a low BMI. In the last couple of months um, I forced the doctors to do C-peptide tests um, and, and anti-GAD tests and they've come back and said that I'm actually a type 2. Now they're struggling to believe that because of my low BMI. They don't want me to lose any more weight because I'm already towards the lower end of the spectrum so I'm hoping to come off insulin soon. But in the last sort of nine years I've used a number of different meters. Um, I do 10 to 12 tests a day because I'm an HGV driver so you know I've a lot of experience in using different blood glucose meters um, so let's get on and take a look so here I've got a small range of blood glucose meters I may just need to use one or two um, but I've got two that are the same here which are the latest um, contour next ones uh, contour next um, one touch vario, I've got an AccuCheck meter here and a BG star um, but I'll start by doing a test on these two meters just to see um, what the readings are. I've intentionally not taken any insulin um, after breakfast just so I've got a slightly higher reading just so that hopefully we can get a slightly different test result on both meters. So one test strip. Two test strips. So they're both ready to take a reading now. Let's get a little bit of blood. So on that one. So on that one. Now you'd expect because they're both the same meter but they should give a very similar result. But you see, there's almost two in the readings between them. So 14.6, sorry, 14.5 and 16.2. So let's just do another one on a contour next. Same hole still, still bleeding, so let's pop a little bit of blood on there. It's been accepted. So again, 17.1. So that's showing the highest reading so far. Let's try an Accu check. I think I'll need to stick another tent peg in my finger. Asking for blood, so let's give it some. Sixteen point eight, so that's similar to the sixteen point two there. Let's do a quick one on the vario. Asking for blood. Seventeen point one. So as you can see, I've had a variety of results there from different meters. The lowest being fourteen point five. The highest being seventeen point one. In fact, both of those say seventeen point one. So which one's correct? Which one should I trust? Which one should I dose from? Um, that's the biggest question that I here getting asked. So the answer to the question of which one should I trust? All of them. 
all of them are correct. And here's the reason why. You've got to remember these are not lab grade testing machines, they're home testing devices. Okay, they're designed to be cheap and affordable for home testing. Okay, they're not lab results. In 2013, um, there was an ISO standard um, for blood glucose meters which decides how accurate they've got to be. The ISO for it, so that you can look it up if you like, is ISO 15197 and it's the 2013 or 2015 standard you want to look at. They're both pretty much the same. What that says is that 95% of test results, so not all of your test results, but 95% of, result, of your test results, if your, blood, your lab blood was 5.55 or lower, then the result the meter should show should be plus or minus 0.83 millimoles per litre. Okay, so that is the, the tightest, most stringent part of it. If you're is more than 5.55 then the results on your meter can show plus or minus 15 percent so what does that mean in real world well let's take a look at that if your lab reading was 2.5 then your meter is allowed to show anywhere between 1.7 and 3.3. Put a little dot in there. So anywhere between 1.7 and 3.3. That's at its most stringent end. If we go up to say a lab reading of 5 millimoles. then your meter would be allowed to show anywhere between 4.2 and 5.8. Now let's jump up a little bit. Let's go above the 5.55. So if your lab reading was 7.5, your meter could show between 6.4 and 8.7. So this is where the numbers are starting to get a bit bigger. So let's jump up one more. 10 could show you anywhere between 8.5 and 11.5. 20 could show you anywhere between 17 and 23. At the higher end of the scale, your lab result was 30 then you could be 25.5 to 34.5 on your meter. So how are you supposed to interpret these results? It's quite easy really. If your meter shows anywhere between 1.7 and 3.2 you're low. No matter what way you look at it you need to raise your blood glucose a little bit 4.2 to 5.8, you could say that you know your, your blood glucose is you know relatively good, doesn't need too much changing. If it's at the lower end, then you might just need to keep an eye on it. The same at 7.5. If you were showing anywhere between sort of 6.4 and 8.7, in my case, I'd be saying, well, you know that's relatively okay. Um, I'm not going to bother too much at the moment. I'll correct it at the ne next meal if I feel I need to. You know, at 10, you're, you're starting to get at the higher end. You know, if it was, was post-meal, I'd, I'd accept that. But anything higher, I'd be saying, well, I'm too high. I need to take some more insulin and bring that down a little bit. 
So these are just designed to give you a rough guide. And to prove my point, if you take a look at part of test strips, you can get control solutions for your meters. The control solutions come out with a, with a preset millimole on it. And in the case of, um, this is the contour neck strips, if you've got a low control solution and you can ask the, the, the meter manufacturers to send you this, if you've got a low control solution, if your meter shows anywhere between 2.1 and 2.7, your meter is considered to be correct. Uh, a normal test between 6.2 and 7.8, a high test between 17 and 23, sorry, is it 22.3. So if your meter shows anywhere between these, it's considered to be working correctly. And that's why all these meters give different readings. Again, there's an AccuCheck. They, they do two control solutions for theirs, anywhere between 1.7 and 3.3, 14.1 and 19.1. If your meter falls between those, they're considered to be correct. The only one that doesn't put one on the pot is the one touch Vario, but the specification is written in the uh, handbook for that. Again, there's some BG Star. And there's your, your control solution range there on the pot. I've heard some people say, well, I'll go to the doctors, I'll get a blood test taken at the same time that I do a test, um, and the meter that shows the closest reading at the time, that's the most accurate, I'll use that. But that's not necessarily the case. Each different pot, Taken, taking a blood test at say different temperatures, different humidity rates may give different results on different days. Different batches may give, give different results. So what's the most accurate on one day may not be the most accurate the following day. My advice for choosing a blood glucose meter, if you're allowed to choose your own, is choose one that suits your lifestyle the most. For me, it's the Contour Next One because that's got the biggest memory on it. I'm an HGV driver so I can take 10-12 tests a day. I need a meter that holds three months worth of results. This meter does. I believe this holds 900 results whereas the One Touch Flex only holds 450 results so I won't have three months worth of results. Other people like the AccuCheck Mobile because everything's all in one. Um, some people like say the BG Star because it gives you an HbA1c uh, guess um, you know some meters have Bluetooth and software that they like some people don't have a choice of what meter they're allowed they'll be given one by their doctor or consultant um, from 2000 and I think it was it's just 2016 May all meters have to conform to the ISO 1597 so they should be considered to be within those accuracy ranges. If you're concerned um, contact the meter manufacturer, ask them for a control solution, do a control test, um, even ask them for a spare meter uh, and choose from there. But don't let slightly different results like these concern you. I would have considered all of those results I got from every one of those meters to be correct your best thing to do is choose one meter and stick with it so that you're getting consistent results. Um, you learn then how that meter works and what your insulin requirements are on it. I keep one as a spare in case I lose one. Um, the rest I just keep tucked away and, and don't, don't use them anymore. Um, so don't panic about slightly different results. They are all considered to be correct. Uh, if you've got any questions about any of these meters or any of the information that I've given you, then please write in the comments below. Um, and take care. Look after your diabetes.